granted, a lot of people can't afford to come to our school. I get that. But you are not getting into this business for free. No. You do not make $100,000 a year without spending money to do it. Yeah. And if you, if you don't have in your mind that before this is done, I'm gonna spend $10,000, and I need to figure out how to get that $10,000 so I can do this, don't even bother. Yeah. I think so many people get because, you know, my friend did it, that they think they can get into it for super inexpensive or for free. And um, yep. it's just not the case. No, no, right. and and not only that, you know, just that's just the the training and the getting the licenses and the things that you need. Then you have to have money set aside for your first deployment. Oh God, because yeah. you're not gonna, you're not gonna. So even if you close claims starting day one, optimistically, the earliest you possibly are gonna see. Any money in a paycheck is going to be two, at least two weeks from at that point. At least two weeks. At least two weeks. And a lot of adjusters, especially new adjusters, probably all new adjusters, unless they listen, actually listen to what I tell them to do, are not going to have any claims closed in the first week, and nope. probably not going to have any claims closed in the second week either. Correct. And so, once they, and then if, if they scope, if they scope and write, like scope, 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 and then spend two days writing, and then turn those in, and then try to scope and scope, those are all gonna get kicked back. Every single so, one of them is gonna Everyone. Well, let's talk about training. Training's a good subject, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good at that. You're, that's kind of your domain. That so, is. you and I were talking, um, we've been talking about, you know, veteran adjusting school is, it's it's a um, it's, it's kind of hard to get into. It's a challenge to get into because it's you only take a limited number of students. Very much so. And it's a it's a long term program, so it's a little bit higher cost to it. Um, but and this is kind of what we were talking about. How can adjusters who, for whatever reason, can't swing coming here because you know they need to get started right away, or they don't want to wait you know six months or whatever it is, um, or whatever. Like, what else can they do to prepare themselves for their first storm deployment or their first claims assignments? Learn how to breathe. <laughs> yeah. <Just laughs> and be a warm that body. Be the, that's, the, that's the first thing. Breathe in, yeah. breathe out. Um, yeah, to, to what you're saying, you know, we understand that we're, we're so limited. And, you know, I think we were talking yesterday that we're the only school in the country that the VA recognizes for GI Bill benefits. Right. So that's really what we were founded on and what we've always tried. But I know from connecting to you a couple years ago that what you're providing to the industry is that beginning, right? So where do you start? Right. And, you know, what you hear so much in the industry is, oh, well, go get your license and apply to 50 IA firms. And that's gonna be, you're not gonna get anywhere with that. Because the IA firms need to know, at least you know how to turn on a computer. Right. <clears throat> right, and yeah. I'm not even talking about Xactimate yet, yeah. but just how do you turn on a computer? Um, so, you know, and, and I know a lot of folks that come here or that talk to us about coming here, they're like, well, I got my license and I took a three-day Xactimate course. Well, that's great. But how well do you know Windows 10? Right, right, exactly. It has nothing to do with adjusting. Yep. But do you know how to make a PDF? Do you know how to follow a file track? When an IA firm sends you a zip file, do you know how to open a zip file? Yep. And all of those are things, I think, it's a misnomer, I guess is the word, that people that want to get into the industry think, oh, all I need to do is go and study for this test. And all of my friends told me that I'm never going to use 80% of what I'm studying for. But I don't know what the 20% I should be paying attention to right. is. It's but now I have a license and I should be an adjuster. Yeah. And yeah. that just is not the case. Yeah. Right? And, um, I think what you've been doing over the last couple years as far as putting out snippets, when you came here last year yeah. and we did all those videos, right? Putting out snippets of here's how you do um, 
a roof inspection. Here's how you do an interior inspection. Here's how you do all of the different things that you're doing is really what they should be paying attention to. Not just watching it and then saying, I know it, right. but watching it with a pencil and piece of paper and writing down the things they think they need to remember. And then practicing. And then practicing it. it, right, right. Which really, and one of the things that we talk a lot about at the school is, do you have checklists? Do you have cheat sheets? Yeah. Do you have the things that you need to be able to do this job? And, you know, this isn't about climbing a roof and measuring a roof. This is about how do I talk to an insured. This is about how do I look at um, a declaration page and understand what the heck it is. And how yeah. do I take all these processes? What does the file reviewer need from me in order to close this file? We don't get paid until the file reviewer is done. So if we, just right. throw, if we just throw crap on the wall and say, oh, well, I just need to make some money, so I'm gonna send this up. Now that guy on the inside is gonna spend two hours trying to figure out what the heck we did. It's, you know, lack of training is why these insurance companies are lowering their fee schedules to the IAs. Right, yeah. That's why yeah. it is, because they're not getting the product from the field and they have so much more money they have to spend on the back end, whether it's the file reviewer reviewing it, or now I have to send another adjuster out to reinspect it, and all of those costs, when they're sitting up in their ivory towers and their actuaries are pushing numbers, they're going, well, this, this is costing us $50 more, so let's take it off the front end. Yep. And yeah. it's, it's something that without education and without training and without knowing what you're doing when you get on that first storm, let me take that back. Nobody's going to know what they're doing on the first storm. Right. right. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> you're not going to know what you were doing. Yeah. But having an idea of what the process is and what you need to know um, is going to be huge. You For know? sure. So it's a. I guess that's a long answer to your quick question, but you know, it really is, you have to really be able to know what all of the parts and pieces are. And again, that's what you do. Right, right. You, you're giving people the parts and pieces. They just need to go in and pay attention to what those parts are and say, oh, roof inspection. I start on the edge. I check the shingles. I check the pitch. Right, yep. Right, I take chalk out. I do this. Right, and write that down because they're not going to remember it when they get into the field, even if they watched it a month ago, and now here are, you are standing on top of a roof. Yeah. So if I'm not watching you, and I'm not writing down what I need to do, and I don't have a checklist that says, first thing, say hi to insured. Hi, insured. Number two, <laughs> do this. Right. Uh -huh. yep, yep. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I tell, because we train military so much, um, it's really interesting because they know what checklists are. Yeah, yeah. Right? That their whole standard operating procedure. SOP, SOP. Their whole life is about that, and they go to weeks and weeks of of school just to learn how to pull the trigger correctly. You know, facing a lawsuit can be a terrifying and stressful experience, jeopardizing your years of hard work and success. If you don't have adequate insurance coverage as an adjuster, you're putting yourself at great financial risk. If you make your living from handling claims as an independent adjuster, then you must get errors and emissions and general liability insurance coverage. It doesn't matter if you're a 1099 or a W-2 or you work carrier direct, Protect yourself with professional liability insurance from Kaplik. To find out more and to download the insurance for adjusters free guide, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV. That's cplic.net slash adjuster TV. All right, so yeah. there's a whole checklist. What do I do before I pull that trigger? What do I, what do I check? And so for a new adjuster, to just sit down and, and write themselves a checklist of what to do is going to be huge for them. Yeah. You know, and, and, and the more they do those kind of different parts and pieces, the more that's becoming <coughs> um, muscle memory. Yeah. Right? For I, sure. Yeah. I watch you, I write it down, I say it to my wife. 
Yeah. Or there the you go. So, so that, the pro that process from the initial brain to actually writing it down is sinking into the brain more to actually applying it is sinking in the brain more so by the time I get to the sixth or seventh insured it's now becoming second nature for me to do it yep. Yep. so um, you know there's so much more that that goes on at the school but for people that can't afford to come here um, I just I'm so excited for you and what you're doing with adjuster TV and how much you really help in the industry because it's huge dude well, so. Thanks for saying that. That's, You're welcome. I mean, listen, I, I don't know why, or I should say, I feel kind of vested in the industry. It's been, it's been a really good industry to me, and I've, I've had a really good career. Um, and I feel like, you know, I'm kind of uniquely positioned to be able to give back. And like you said, I mean, it's, adjusters are kind of a, you know, it's according to the carriers right now, uh, we're a necessary evil, right? We're like, oh, well, we got to use the IAs because you know hurricanes, whatever, just hit the coast, and we have 250,000 claims, and we just no, we don't have enough staff to Correct. handle all those claims. So they've got to use us, right? They can't have insurers out there with their phones looking at their half destroyed house. And it's just not gonna, <laughs> so they've got to use us, but you know, I, f I still feel like you know, based on my experience and, and what I've kind of figured out a lot of stuff on my own and stuff that I was mentored. And that is, if I can put in, you know, just a little bit more effort, then it's gonna, it's gonna show up in my work and it's gonna help me in my career and it's gonna help the insurer, it's gonna help the carrier, it's gonna help the IA firm, it's gonna help everybody involved because I'm making an effort, an attempt to get that file right the first time, the first time out. Correct. I mean, and it doesn't take, it's not like it, like, I, you know, well, I could do six a day, but now I'm trying to do a little bit more effort and now I can only do three. I find that I'm able to do eight a day because part of that effort is figuring out ways to spend less time doing each piece, streamlining efficiency and everything, finding out from the file reviewers, do I need 125 photos for this hail claim? No, I need 46, right? I don't need 15 pictures. 25 pictures of downspouts. <laughs> you, know, <wow. laughs> you know what I mean? And that takes time. And so, and so when I streamline that down, I give the, the best photos, photos that tell the story, right? I, I don't need as many. Correct. Now there's an argument that can be made for, well, you want to make sure you get all the, the photos that you're going to need, right? So don't try to like shoot too many, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, the objective is to just spend less time doing stuff on each file so that you can spend more time answering the insurance questions, you know, negotiating with the contractor, doing X, Y, and Z other thing that will enhance the claims experience, right? And I think, you know, back to kind of our original question, you know, obviously even if, um, you, there just isn't, Voss is just one school here, right? It's like you have, franchises all over the country, so no. it couldn't, you can't handle hundreds of people every year. Um, so, you know, for me, what I tell people is, is I'm, I'm like, well, if you can swing it and if you can wait, you know, then call and talk to the folks, you know, the, the onboarding people or whatever at Boss and see, you know, what they uh -huh. say, because they, they may say, well, it's not for you, or the, the, this industry might not be for you. I mean, they may, you know, you're in a, it's a long We're very good with that, about that. But yeah, so, for sure. but so, you know, say somebody is, you know, they watch my videos and they're like, I've watched all Matt's videos and I understand that it's a lot of work. I understand that it's this, it's that. You have, there's a ramp, there's a learning curve, there's all this stuff. I still want to do it, I'm, I'm all in, you know. So I tell people, I say, well, listen, you know, there's a lot of IA firms that are offering free training or low cost training, or training that you pay them 350 bucks and they pay you back $300 when you deploy for the first time within 120 days, like Crawford's doing that. Is that what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. so, but I would never personally show up to one of those trainings knowing zero. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna right. invest, I'm gonna go to that training anyway because I think it's, it's, gonna, it's only gonna reinforce what I've picked up previously but it's also good networking, you know? Right. You wanna, and you don't wanna be the guy 
crack it, pulling the sticker off of his laptop and opening it up and how do, where's the on button on this thing? <laughs> Windows, why? How many, how many, how many doors? times have you seen that? Yeah. <laughs> orientations. So I will say, you know, for me, if I was starting all over again and maybe I had limited resources or I needed to get started right away, I would go to Avail, I would go to a caddy, I would go to, I would spend some money on one of those things and do like you said, make a check, sit there, make a checklist of everything that they're saying to do. Because they're going to show you, well, here's Xactimate. They're going to show you how to scope. They're gonna, everybody's got a building with you know, framing on it that has you know, stickers that say, have Xactimate codes on it. Everybody's got that, right? I mean, you probably have it, too. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> obviously, th what they're not going to get from you, f by not going to you, obviously, is that simulation experience where they're going to interact with insurers and everything. But they're going to get kind of those, the bait, like the, just a small tool set mm -hmm. of the essential skills. And then they can go to the free training at the IA firm after that. This is what I tell people. This is what I would do. And then reinforce that. Show up, you know, already knowing how to, to put a roof in the sketch and everything. And that's going to get noticed, right? Correct. They're going to notice that stuff. Correct. Just so show up with Correct. some knowledge. No matter how you can get your hands on it. Don't go there until you know how to open up your computer. Right. And don't buy the computer the day before you go there. No. There's no sense in doing that. Yeah. Buy the computer, open the computer up, figure out how to use the computer, figure out how Windows 10 works, make sure that you have Office on there so you have Word documents, and all of those things could take... So. Not stereotyping anybody, but I have a lot of contractors that come through the school. Yeah. They've been contractors for 25 years. And when we say to them, so how much do you know about the computer? They're like, oh, I'm, I'm great on the computer. I know how to you know, download an email, and I know how to send an email, and then you know, I know everything I need to know. Right. Well, can you zip a file folder? Can you? Print a PDF. Can you all of these? Or can you find an SD card in the file and, hierarchy? And directory? literally, you can go. You can go on YouTube and say, "How do I make Windows 10 work?" Yep. And there'll be a hundred videos on there. Yeah. But if you don't do that before you go to the Vale or City, and quite frankly, a lot of these. They charge you 350 to go for their five days, but you have to pay for your hotel room and you right, have to right. pay for all the rest of those yeah. things that are associated with it where the school is pretty much all inclusive. We have housing for you. We have all the rest right, of that right. kind of stuff. Um, let me get off of that, but because uh, <laughs> I'm not pitching the school here. I really, I, I'm, I'm trying not to. Don't come. We no. Just tell it, you. it is fine. <laughs> and if you do, it'll be January at this point. Right. But you know, there's so much, like I said, there's so much to learn prior to. If you can open up that computer in orientation or at, at the IA's training facility, you can open up that computer and you already have had recently the Xactimate demo version. Yeah. Which is enough, but if you don't have a full Xactimate working version, there's so many things that you can't do. That's right. Right? Download price lists. Download, import so, macros. Import macros. So there's all of these things you can't even see that you don't know right. in Xactimate. But it, it can at least give you the basic. And don't tell them when you show up that you know how to use Xactimate. Right? Yeah. I have the trial version. I can open it up. I know. I've taken I know what it looks bit, like. Poked around. Right. Push all of the buttons. Yeah. It isn't. It isn't exactly. This is great too. I see this all the time. So I have this Xactimate trial version, and I know how to put a roof in. <coughs> well, do you know how to get the documents? Do you know how to fill out the insured info tab? Do yeah, you know, yeah. Do you know what the coverage tab means? Where's the activity directory? Uh, where's, where's, where's the GLR? Where's the activity? Right? right. So those are the things. <coughs> Sketches sketch is, is, again, muscle memory and a learned thing. That's the easiest part of exactly. Yeah, name. everybody spends a lot of time on it because they think it's. Yeah. They think that's what they're supposed to know. Yeah, and you're not going to use Sketch as much as you think. Especially if you're on a hailstorm these days, because they're going to send you an eagle view. Yeah. All right. But how do I get in there? What are the categories and the selector codes? And what's that ACT next to that? What's that button do? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and pushing those buttons—that's the education, and it doesn't cost any money to do it. Yep. Buy yourself a decent computer. 
don't download your apps to it. Don't download all the other weird no. stuff to it. Buy a computer that's going to be your work computer. Yep. If you're an Apple guy, great. Buy a PC because Xactimate works better on a PC. I know you're an Apple right, guy. Right, yeah. Well, now you're an Apple on a PC, so <laughs> but, there's no Mac version yet. Right. Exactly. I did ask. I did ask those guys about it though, and they're like, "Well, you know, I mean, maybe in the future, sometimes." So. Yeah, that's what they said to me ten years ago. Yeah, right. right. right? So, <laughs> ain't coming. But but those are, you know, when you talk about education, education doesn't have to cost us money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Education and nowadays, especially YouTube. Right. So just go on there, learn how the computer works. Then learn how Xactimate works. Push all of the buttons. Yeah. Um, we only do one full day of training in Symbility, but literally our guys sit here for three quarters of the day and just watch YouTube videos. They're, they're beautiful. You get Symbility on your computer and you can watch the video and be doing the stuff at the same time. And so that's the education that I think people get so excited because their cousin, their brother, their uncle, somebody in the family said, yeah, I, I make $150,000 a year. You're not making $150,000 a year your first year. No, no. It is not going to happen. No. You make 40, you'll be good. <laughs> right? I didn't make 40. I, I didn't. I, I think I made right at 40 my first year. But you know, your second year, maybe there's a hurricane. And you're going to go out and maybe you will make a hundred, but it's going to be so stressful. You're going to wish you never did it. Yeah. My fifth year. Fifth when year. I get my first hurricane. Yeah. Yeah. And I was probably, I'm, I kind of got thrown to the wolves in the beginning because I got in in 2002 and 2004, four hurricanes, 2005, Katrina. So that whole two years to me, was just a blur right. of stuff coming at me. Yeah. Um, I became a better adjuster for it, but you know, my background in the music business taught me how to do processes. And I always used to say to everybody, it's just another production. Yeah, Going to hurricanes, it really is. it's just another production. Yeah, yeah. What are the parts and pieces? And I've always been good, mainly because I have a really organized wife, but I've always been really good at being able to put processes together, looking to see what the whole process is. Okay, what do I need to learn first? Um, one of the things that, it's funny, I don't think a lot of people know, but there's a little tool in, uh, <clears throat> in Windows. It's called the Snippet Tool. Yeah. And I can literally, if I have to go into the ECS system in State Farm, right? I pull up the first window, snip it, put a little highlight on the button I'm supposed to push. Right? And I have this open in a Word document. And then I push that button, and then another screen comes up. And I snip that screen, and I highlight the three buttons I need to push on that screen. And then I save that over here. And in an hour and a half, two hours, I have a whole process. You built a job aid for I built a job aid, getting right? into the ECS. Exactly. Whatever it is. You know, my guidelines, my just a regular claim. How do I get to my yeah. GLR? What's that look like? What button do I yeah. push? Yeah. And, and again, you know, you're asking about training. If you're a new adjuster, go frickin' train on yourself. Go to YouTube. Do everything you can. Write everything down. Yeah. If you got a question, they've got you to reach out to. They've got a Adjuster Central to reach out to. They've got a million places to reach out to. I would caution reaching out to some of these Facebook groups because you're going to get 47 different answers and you're not going to know which one. If, yeah, if you don't get dogpiled on and yelled at for being a... Right. If you have to ask that question, then you yeah, shouldn't be Yeah, you adjuster. shouldn't be here. <laughs> right. But, right. There's a, but there's a lot of people that you can ask. Yeah, for that. sure. Well, let's talk about... So, so, okay, so somebody, you know, they want to do a homegrown DIY, like training, like learning on ramping kind of a program for themselves. Let's, so we start with, we've got the computer. Right, we learn how right. to use the computer before. Correct. I mean, you can download exact, I mean, and, you know, the trial version or whatever on there, but you need to know. You only got 30 days, so you better learn the computer before learn you Learn the computer do that. first. Right? <laughs> there you go. Spend the first 30 days doing that. Yeah, yeah. So, and so to figure out, you know, learn how to, you know, if, when you stick a, an SD card in, what happens? How do I find, you know, if it's got photos or files or whatever on it, how, how do get, I figure that? Mm -hmm. How do I get my, into my email, and how do I get a file out of an email into 
a folder on the desktop. You know, that kind of stuff. Correct. How do you have within your email, and Gmail's awesome this way, yeah. how do you create little folders over on the side? So if I'm talking yeah. to an IA firm, I want a folder over here from that IA firm because when I send them an email and they respond, I want to put it in that folder. Yeah. So my inbox doesn't have 475 emails in it. And I got 47 from this IA firm. They go right in here. Yeah. The rules and filters. The rules, the guidelines, mm-hmm. all of those things. Yeah, that, no, I mean like in the email. So you set up a yeah. rule with like a filter and it'll like shoot all your, you know, this IA firm's emails to this one and that IA firm's emails to that one. And then you can see it'll it'll be bolded and it'll have 13 next to it. Exactly right? correct. Like, okay, I'll get 13 emails from this IA firm, jump in there. Oh, I got a, they still need my background check. They still need this, they still need that, you know, as you're onboarding. So yeah, so learn a computer first. And once you kind of get, to, you know, you know, you're spending time on it. I'm not going to game on it. I'm not going to watch movies on it. I'm not going to do anything on it except for work, right? I'm going to have Office Suite on there. Correct. If I if I don't have any experience with Word or Excel, I'm going to watch. You don't need to watch videos about that, right? And learn how to use the basics. And you don't have to be like a scientist, like because you can do just about anything in Excel. I mean, it's like correct. It's you could. But you, you don't have to know how to use the formulas. I don't know no, how to use all yeah. the formulas in Excel. Right, right. And there's thousands of them, right? Yeah. So you need to like there's like three formulas. Yeah. Right? And, then, and then there's the addition and subtraction. Anyway, learn how to use that. Learn how to you know, get a, a Word document and turn it into a PDF. Correct. You know? Exactly. Mundo. Yeah. And, then, and then maybe have like an Excel spreadsheet file that you've saved in a folder, a Word document that you've saved in a fold, that same folder, and then a PDF that you saved in that folder, and then learn how to compress that file into a zip. Into and then a zip. attach it to an email and email it to yourself. Just uh-huh. figure that out. Just, it's, and it's, just mess with it. Because you're going to have to do that stuff in your computer. All right? the time. All the time. So you've got to be fast with the computer. You know, not just Xactimate, not just Symbility or whatever. Exactly. And then, once you do that, then you can f- jump into Xactimate. Get the trial version of Xactimate. Yeah. And then push all the, don't go to Sketch and think, oh, I'm going to learn how to just push all the buttons over on the side. What yeah. do tools mean? What do preferences mean? Yeah. What does that look like? Is there things yeah. that I need to change? What are the three tabs at the top? The insured info, the coverage, the parameters. What do they mean? Yeah. They're not just tabs. And I would say just have a legal pad and a pen and just start with and just figure out what everything is. So the the parameters tab has these things in it and just bullet points, you know, overhead and profit, model opening statement, yada yada. You, you're not gonna know what those are no. until you take a class and you know, or go to a like a training or whatever where they show you. And even then, they're probably still not going to know until you get deployed and they say, all right, load the model, the model open statement. <laughs> and you're like, or, what? Depending on MOX? The, What's an MOX right? file? Let me see if I can open that in PDF. Exactly. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then have all your MOXs in PDFs yeah. I get it. So I have that Xactimate, free Xactimate thing. And I have activity diary templates, GLR templates, um, macros, sample estimates, you know, f- just loaded up with stuff and it's, it's all free as part of that. Yeah. And, and again, YouTube, I get emails. I YouTube for Xactimate. I haven't gone through a lot of that, but YouTube for Xactimate. Yeah. If you do that before you go to a three day class, you're going to have an understanding of what the guy's going to oh, tell yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. So therefore you can pay a little better attention to him while he's telling you how to do something. And well, I know 50% of it, well, look, he just gave me the next 30%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it all starts working. Yeah, so. yeah. And so I, and I'll get emails from people who have downloaded those files from, you know, where you can get an Adjuster TV Plus. And my computer s- says uh, it's unreadable file, or it's not able to, I don't have the app for, and I'm like, you have to import that into Xactimate. Well, I can't because it's uh, the trial version. Right. And I'm like, and I talked to Xactware about that, and they're like, well, you know, we're working on it. And then, well, they don't want too much. They probably just told me they were working the, on Here's it. your free 30 days. Now we want your 150 bucks a month. Yeah, or 315 bucks a month. 200, yeah, right. These days, there are a growing number of remote work opportunities for independent adjusters. With Scoper Writer programs popping up all over the place, you can do photo and scope in the field 
or you can just sit at home in your pajajays and write the estimates on what the scoper got when they were out in the field. And it doesn't matter where you live, as long as you have the internet, you can write claims as a desk adjuster, but you can't get that sweet gig without being licensed. So if you live in Nebraska, which doesn't require an adjuster to be licensed, you still have to have a New York license to write claims somebody scoped in New York, makes sense? Of all the credentials you need as an adjuster, there really is none more important than your adjuster license, especially your first one. You're gonna need it to do just about everything else, including some adjuster schools even require you to have one before they'll let you enroll. So you need Adjuster Pro. Adjuster Pro provides a comprehensive and easy to use way to get and maintain your adjuster licenses. Most importantly, Adjuster Pro was founded by independent adjusters and the team at Adjuster Pro is dedicated to helping you thrive as an adjuster with resources for every licensing state, including dead simple CE packages. Adjuster Pro is the gold standard for adjuster licensing. You'll find everything you need to get licensed in one place. Go to adjustertv.com slash adjuster pro right now. But, so, and, and, so, and then find training that will help show the claims process. Like, again, my, that free Xactimate thing I got on my website, it shows, it's five lessons, and each one is like 10 to 30 minutes long, and it shows how I use Xactimate in the context of the claims Perfect. process with the documents and stuff like that. And I think that, that, I think that provides, it's not like the basics of Xactimate, it's not like, uh -huh. I don't, it's not a tour of Xactimate and like, you know, here's how to, it's, how, we're gonna watch me run through my, my claims process. I'll explain the claims process as I go and here's what I do in Xactimate at each one of these points. Um, which I think. But you need to have a full working version to, in order to really make that. Yeah, I mean you can watch it, but you can't, you can't download, you can't import the, 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 the templates and the macros and all that stuff without so, that. So, but, but, you know, they need to learn, so we got the computer skills, we learn where everything is in Xactimate with the trial version, mess around with it, try to, you know, do, put some line items in, see what all those buttons do, and make, take notes, you know, make a checklist, you know. Uh -huh. And then, and then they need to know kind of how that Xactimate fits into the whole, the greater like claims process, which is part of what my little training does. Um, they're not going to find a whole lot of that on YouTube except for on my channel because Correct. I feel that that's Correct. You'll, and you'll, you'll find tons and tons. There's, I mean, and there's some really good ones like uh, Xactimate Mastery, Alina Wilson. Uh -huh. She does stuff for contractors, but it's like she, she teaches, she's a great teacher and there's, she's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos on how to do everything in Xactimate, right? But it's all like like the, is she a subscription channel or is she? No, no it's she's a, YouTube it's free, channel. Yeah, it's free on right, YouTube. yeah, I've seen her. Yeah, I've seen her. That's um, so then, okay, so that, so we've got kind of exact to me nailed down. You know, we're we're figuring out how it works in the claims process. So what else do we need? What's the next step? Like we got customer licensing. service. We got uh, okay. Well, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you could be doing that. You can start that at any point. You, while you're doing licensing, if you think you really want to get into it. Yeah. One of the things you just said that brought up a thought in my mind, you know, granted, a lot of people can't afford to come to our school. I get that. But you are not getting into this business for free. No. You do not make $100,000 a year without spending money to do it. Yeah. And if you, if you don't have in your mind that before this is done, I'm gonna spend $10,000, and I need to figure out how to get that $10,000 so I can do this, don't even bother. Yeah. Computer's yeah. gonna cost you 750 bucks, right? Yeah. There's gonna be a point where you have to turn Xactimate on the real version, even if it's for only a month, that's $250. You've gotta to fly to that IA firm and stay there for five days, that's gonna cost you $2,000. Yeah, yeah. So I think so many people get, because, you know, my friend did it, that they think they can get into it for super inexpensive or for free. And um, yep. it's just not the case. No, no right. and, and not only that, you know, just, that's just the, the training and the getting the licenses and the things that you need. Then you have to have money set aside for your first deployment. Oh God, Because yeah. you're not gonna, you're not gonna, so even if you close claims starting day one, optimistically, the, 
early as you possibly are going to see any money in a paycheck is going to be two, at least two weeks from at that point. At least two weeks. At least two weeks. But if you if you if you turn that that first claim in the day after the pay period, you're going to be looking almost a month sometimes yeah. before you're going to get that first check. And a lot of adjusters, especially new adjusters, probably all new adjusters, unless they listen actually listen to what I tell them to do, are not going to have any claims closed in the first week, and nope. probably not going to have any claims closed in the second week either. Correct. And so. Once they and then if, if they scope if they scope and write like scope 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 and then spend two days writing and then set, turn those in and then try to scope and scope those are all going to get kicked back every single so one of them is going to everyone everyone and they're going you don't have the, the 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 right header you don't have the right price list you don't have right this you, you you're, you're what you know a million things can and you have to get, go back and fix all fifteen of those if I just if I just scope one claim a day yeah for my first week and spend time closing that claim and sending emails to ask the questions before I close that claim yeah and close that claim being a new adjuster they know that yeah so that that new guy turns in a claim somebody's going to look at it. Yes. The guy on the other end is either going to go, this guy sucks so bad, I'm just going to fix it and send it up. And then you don't even know you suck that bad. <laughs> right. right? Or, wow, this guy's at least trying, let me send back the revisions. And now you got this email with 14 different revisions on it. Well, that's going to take you another couple hours. Oh, so, yeah, for sure. So tomorrow least. you should only inspect one claim because as soon as you get back, you got an hour and a half to just fix up what you messed up from the day before. That's right. That's right. And, and this is not, oh, here comes a hurricane. I'm going to make $100,000. I'm rich. <laughs> and not going to happen. <laughs> Sometimes Irma's come up. Yeah. Harvey's come up. Rare. Katrina's come up. I guarantee you, I saw, I met at least five or six adjusters three months into Katrina that had still not closed a single claim. Oh, I can't even believe that. I just, right? There's no phone numbers. How do you get in touch with the insured? Their house has eight foot of water, and they, all they have is a landline. How are you going to figure that out? Right, right. Right? And so that kind of getting back to money and cost of getting into the business, that kind of cost is huge. And you've got to be prepared for that. Yeah, yeah. So you got to have you got to have resources there. I mean, at the absolute minimum, five thousand bucks in cash. Minimum. Right. I mean, if it's a big storm, you better have more. Yeah, yeah. Or have access to some kind of something that you can lean on. Yeah. Because you might be able to get an advance from the, the firm. I don't know if they Not really if do you're that. new. I don't know if they do that much anymore these days. I mean, you're going to get day uh, two or three or four days of day rate. Right, when you first show up in maybe. orientation, maybe. And then they'll give you new claims, and once you get your new claims, you're off day rate, if you're on it, if you were on at all. And you're only gonna make money when you close claims. And like you said, and that's why I tell people the exact same thing, I'm like, day one, I mean, day one, you're making all your contact calls, right? And you're gonna build your schedule, like, first week, first three to you know, six days, or whatever, you're gonna do one a day. And I say, I say the overarching, because, oh, well, how many should I be able to do by the only do, only scope what you know that you can close that day. Period. Period. End of story. Because not only is it going to put you in a position to have really fast feedback, right? You're going right. to get those files kicked back. Or if you go to the help, the help room and somebody helps you through the whole process, you're going to get the muscle memory. I've closed A to Z. I've, I've done every step on this claim. I've contacted the insured. I've settled. I've done the whole thing, right? You've done it once. You do it again. Right, and then it starts to kind of you start to because guys, what they'll do is they'll they'll scope because that's the easiest part, and then they'll do part of the claim, and they don't do the full claim all the way through, so they don't have that full muscle memory of the Correct. whole thing all the way through, and then by the end of the first week, you might have six claims closed. Maybe you had some like uh, maybe they let you do express over the phone closures, twenty five hundred dollars or less, whatever. Right, so you did you did four or five of those. You might have ten claims closed the first week as a brand new adjuster. You are here and everybody else is down here, right, on the metric list. And your manager sees that. At the end of the first week, if you've closed seven, that's one a day, you're here as opposed to down exactly. here. Exactly. Because so many people are going to show up and they're going to say, I need to at least go to inspect two a day. And by the third day, they're down by five. They've oh, closed yeah. one and there's five that they don't even remember. 
Exactly. And so that's where the down here comes. Yeah. When and it, so this demonstrates th this doing it that way, like we're talking about, it it provides a number of benefits, not the least of which is that kind of almost instant feedback on how how am I doing? So getting want. calibrated to doing it the way they want them done, right? Mm -hmm. Second thing is is that you're you're producing, even if it's only a, f a few a day, one or two or three or four a day, you're produ you're a producer. And they need people to close these claims. What's going to happen is, is two weeks into it. There's going to be people getting their claims starting to get taken away. Correct. And they're going to give them to you. Correct. So you just showed up and you got 50, 40, 70, whatever it is on a hurricane. And then you, it may, you may be there for four months and have 250. By the time it's done. By the time it's all said and done. Whereas, you know, somebody who didn't do that, who's, and they're going to get, there's a lot of pressure on storms from managers, from other adjusters, from everybody. insurers. You know, everybody wants you to, to scope and scope and scope and scope. It feels like you're doing something, right? It's, right? it's being busy instead of being productive. But those people, if they're still there four, six weeks in, you know, they haven't closed anything, or they're, they're spinning out all over the place. They're spending a week, you know, doing corrections on stuff that they, you know. You know, just, the, the very smartest, <laughs> If this is my first deployment, the smartest thing I could do if they drop 50 files on me is call them up immediately and say, can you take 30 of those files and give them to more experienced adjusters and let me show you what I can do with 20? Because then I don't have that pressure that I have to go scope, that I have yeah. to go do this. That I, and, and because once that snowball starts rolling down that hill, it's a freaking avalanche by the time it's halfway through and rolls off the mountain. Yeah. Right? And drops 10,000 10, feet from there. No, it's just <laughs> you, no question you're about not, it. You're not coming back. You are better to have them take them away at first. And then by the time you're done with that 20, let's say it's two weeks. Yeah. 14 days and I closed 20 files. But you are a producer, you said this, that's why I brought this up. You are a producer if you are inspecting and turning one file a day. Yeah. You're a producer. Yeah. And then six days later, you can inspect and close two files a day. And then at the end of that 14th day, usually when you're at like 15, they're gonna start pulling those files from those guys that didn't do that, and they're gonna, here's five more. Yeah. Awesome. Let me get to day 17. Wait, here's five more. Awesome. Let me get to day 20. Right? And you can start yep. building your business. If you think you can run out there, and I've seen it, you've seen it hundreds of times. All right. So, all right. So, we talked about sort of like having finances, being prepared. We talked about computer, Xactimate, you know, licensing. I, I, licensing, we probably should touch on that a little bit because I, I feel like um, it's. It's good education, and like you said, especially with the licensing, when, you, when you're doing the pre-licensing or pre-exam prep for that, right. there's 90%, 80% you're not gonna use ever, and then a little small percentage you can do all the time. But, which one is it? You know, mm -hmm. the, I think the key thing with, to, with the, the licensing stuff and people need to pay attention to it, because it teaches you the kind of the philosophy and the, the fundamentals of what insurance is all about. Correct. Because when you talk to insurers and you're talking to contractors and they, they're getting their you know, selves twisted up because you're not able to pay for something, you know, you're able to be like, well, the reason why is this, right? right. So it helps you to be a better educator when you're in a better communicator when you're talking to the homeowner mm -hmm. and whoever else. Um, and it also, you know, that kind of thing, it's, I mean, it's mind numbing. I mean, it's really like licensing stuff. It's, it, you're just, it's fine print and it all starts to like, you know, kind of, your eyes get crossed when you're trying to read it and study for that stuff and taking the test. And what is an HO3 there. policy? And you're like, what? Yeah. And How it, does that work? And then it'll be, if you're only going to do property, then it's a bunch of auto stuff on there and a bunch of stuff. That Liability. Like, yeah. And, yeah. And what's a PIP? I still don't know what that is. Yeah, know, no, neither do I. So I forgot that all long ago. <laughs> yeah. But but for, for the licensing stuff, you know, people say, well, should I wait to get the license or whatever? I think when you've when you've got a license, you get your home state or your designated home state, and then pick up like, you know, a half a dozen more licenses, like a like a the, the, the immediate close. The, well, I tell everybody what's really close to you. We have a guy that um, lived in Northwest Iowa that came to the class. Yeah. I'm like, okay, 
Nebraska, right. non-licensed. Right, right. Right, but you got to get Michigan. You got to get Minnesota, Minnesota for, sure. for sure. Wisconsin's non-licensed. Right. Ohio's non-licensed. So Colorado's look, non-licensed. Colorado, Colorado. So if you look at where you live and get what's close to you, 12-hour drive. If you're from Macon, Georgia, then you better have everything from Texas to North Carolina, Virginia For non-licensed, sure. right? Yeah. Plus Georgia, plus Mississippi, um, Tennessee non-licensed, Kentucky. Oh my God, Kentucky's a great license to have. You would think there's nobody in Kentucky, but when there's a big storm goes through, there's a lot of claims that yeah, happen yeah, in Kentucky. Yeah. So you so then you so you've got your home state license, which allows you to to do stuff in your home state. Having as many, I mean, honestly, as many licenses you can get your hands on shows that you got some skin in the game. It costs money to get your license. I and mean, if you want to get every single license, it's like thirteen hundred bucks or something like that. Right. We have a guy who came to the last class that had every license, except for New York and California. Right. So. <laughs> A lot of firms are going to have opportunities, some of those remote opportunities, mm -hmm. right? And it, and it may be, um, you know, you may be doing file review or you may be doing, you know, like the, the writer part of a, of a thing. Generally speaking, you're not going to, if you're just a brand spanking new person, they're going to probably want you to have some field experience before they give you that stuff. But there are sure. those opportunities. I, I talked to IA firms about it and they say, yeah, you know, new people, depending on what, they, what training they've gotten, you know, what other kinds of experience they have, you know, we'll put somebody in a, in a remote desk role, you know, out right out of the gate. So it opens up opportunities having all those licenses. You ever feel like you've been thrown to the wolves by the IA firms you work for, like you're just a number on a roster? Wouldn't it be nice to work with a firm who's big enough to get plenty of work, but still small enough to know you by your first name? Then let me tell you about my friends at the Oklahoma-based IA firm, Paysetter Claim Service. Founded in 1997, the thing that sets Paid Setter apart is their relentless pursuit of excellence. They hold themselves and their team of adjusters to a higher standard of quality. And now with their advanced all-in-one claims platform called Evo, you'll get a real-time Uber-style map and communication link to the insured, automatic messages sent to customers throughout the process, file review automation, and a fast, accurate scope with Paysetter's partnership with Hover. Hover is integrated directly into Evo, making for a smooth and seamless field scoping experience for you as the adjuster. Technology is moving faster than ever, and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. AdjusterTV.com slash Paysetter. Once you get your storm under your belt, you know, then you can definitely do remote desk stuff, and you may be, you know, you may live in, Oregon and get claims in New Hampshire, and you're going to have to have a New Hampshire license to do it, right? Correct. Um, so, have just for and it, you really only, you have to test for the first one, right? Unless you're going to get like one of the non-reciprocal ones, yeah. and then you just go to NIPR and just check, 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 check all the ones that you want after you got your first Correct. your home state or your designated home state or CERCON. Yeah, or Circon, or Producer Edge, or you know whatever, yeah. which is probably the same thing. Yeah, but there's only two of them. So a lot of times, if you go to Nipper and you can't get the license, go to Circon. Yeah. Because what happens is those are two competing companies, so they go to the State Department of Insurance, and so Circon, Producer's Edge, whatever it is, has some of them, and then Nipper has the others. Yeah. So yeah. That's yeah. How, that's how you know. Yeah. So get your licenses. Shows you got skin in the game. Shows that you you know that you're you're going to be much more e easily deployable in a lot of different places. Correct. Right. New Jersey. I mean, you know, they're going to you can go all over the place, right? Um, so I think you can go to um, Adjuster Pro. Yeah. There's a couple different places that will show you the 16 non-licensed states. Right. Adjuster Pro. So I. I've, I think they had a map on there or something. Adjuster Pro has an, a reciprocity map, and you can Perfect. click a state, and it'll show all the states that are reciprocal with it. And really, almost all the states that have reciprocity are reciprocal with just about everybody else. Correct. It's really New York, Hawaii, California. I think Alaska, and California, and yeah. like maybe Arizona or something. You could do something weird, but you know, if if you have, and we won't go too deep into this because you know we've got a lot of videos on it. But for your home state license, if you live in Nebraska. Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, uh, Iowa, North Dakota, South Dakota. You know, you have to have a license in Wyoming. You have to have a license in Montana. Montana. You know, Illinois, no license. <coughs> you know, Indiana has a license. Ohio, no license. Um, if you live in one of those non-licensing states and you have to get a designated home state license, which Correct. means you pick one of the other states and you say, I want that to be my licensing state. 
It can honestly, it can be any other state as long as it, you know it's in your best interest to get one that's reciprocal with other states. So, like, not New York, right? But Texas, Florida are kind of the go-to's. Those are the go-to's yeah. nowadays. I mean, we always use Texas. Yeah. Um, for years, and now Florida has kind of stepped into that role. Yeah, yeah, um, and that's what that's what Melissa was telling me. Yeah, as far as it, it adjusts. Yeah. Your so the key thing is is that you want to make sure you get your designated home state in a place that requires fingerprinting and requires the testing and, and has all the the most requirements to do. Correct. Because then that'll make it really easy to get the rest of them. Correct. So and then you know if you live in a state that does license, like if you live in Minnesota, you can't say, well, I want to get my Florida license as my designated home. You have to get a Minnesota, Minnesota. license, because that's yeah. your home state, right? Yeah. So you have to have that one. Yeah. And if you live in New York, get that as your home state. It's not reciprocal with anybody. Then get your Florida, and then, and then apply for the rest of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That's what I had to do, because Arizona isn't reciprocal for, with all the states. Yeah. yeah. So I got my Arizona first, and then I got my Texas non-resident, and then I used my Texas non-resident license to reciprocate to everybody else. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I was I used my Texas for Florida and North and South Carolina and Louisiana and all the rest of yeah. those states. But. I was talking to the folks at Adjuster Pro and I asked them about the New York license. Uh -huh. um, and I said, you know, everybody's like, nobody gets it, even though I tell everybody to get it now. Um, I said, is it really that much more heart challenging to get? And they said, honestly, from their experience and what they know about it, you have to do a couple of extra things, and it takes a little bit longer, and their test is a little bit more involved. And that's it. It's not like, you know, you have to go to New York and like have blood taken and whatever. No. It's, it's no. just you have to, to, to get a surety bond and do a couple other things that other states may not want you to do. But that New York license, I mean, it's, that's, that's a populous state, and there's a lot of property there that can get damaged when something hits. We Sandy, have, I mean. We have one of our guys, I think he graduated in like 2017, 18, something like that, um, that got his New York license. I think he lives in Pennsylvania now mm -hmm. or something like that, but he got his New York license. This is no BS. He went in a month ago, um, got in touch with me a couple days ago, and was like, I already made over 50 grand this month. Because there's no Doing daily? Doing daily. Yeah. He's a badass. Yeah. Right? He's been doing it a long time. He's run a few thousand claims now, storms, non-storms, dailies, fires, all the rest of that stuff. But because of his experience, he's been able to go in. And he said, guy, I run up and down Long Island. That's all I'm doing is Long Island. I'm just yeah. running back and forth up and down Long Island all freaking day long. And, and they typically pay better the, yeah right yeah. but you're dealing with new york and you know most of my guys from texas or you know from the south are like i'm not going up there <laughs> <laughs> but those but those that live in the northeast i guess that's what i'm saying yeah the guys that are in new jersey and the guys that are in connecticut the guys that are in pennsylvania the guys that are around new york it totally behooves you to get a New York license. For sure. Yeah. You are going to. and They crush it up there. And the IAs are going to hire you just knowing you have a New York license. Yeah. And they may send you out somewhere else, but at least you're the guy that has a New yeah, York license. Yeah, because they can say to their carrier clients, they can say, well, we've got X number of adjusters that have a New York license Correct. and they're ready to deploy. And, right. You know, again, I, I think even still today, you still have to have they're still going to want you to do CAT first. Most firms are not going to want to put you on daily. It's true. Um, but I don't think you have Unless to do Unless, of course, you come to veteran adjusting. Well, yeah. So if you get, like, advanced, <laughs> like, you know. If you get the fancy training. training. <laughs> you um, get the fancy training. But generally speaking, they want you to, because, because CAT is so repetitive, it uh -huh. helps, you exactly. know, for new people, you're going to, all the things that you, you do for training, whether you go to Voss or whatever it is. Correct. It's, you're, you're all most of your learning is going to happen on your first, Correct. first, second, third storms, right? And you're going to, it's the learning curve goes up from there, Correct. because you're learning how to conduct yourself. You know, you get them started in kind of like a, a little bit of a cushioned environment with the the kind of the storm simulation, but mm -hmm. then they get 60 claims or 25 claims or whatever. And, you know. They forgot everything I trained them. <laughs> right. Goes out the window. So, you know, the reasoning is is that they, you know, if if you handle 80 hail claims. 
in a town, they're probably going to be similar houses, right? So you're going to sure. groove that, that claims process in on every single one of those. You're going to talk to a whole bunch of people. It's high volume, right? Sure. When do you go to do daily claims? Daily claims are, are a much lower volume, right? And you're, they're, they're, most of the time, they're much bigger claims. And they're, they're more complex. They're more complex. And they, they require more attention and they require yeah. a better report. They it could be, so instead of having like 60 hail claims, where the houses are all, you know, I mean, the houses could be similar or whatever, but 60 of the same peril, you're going to have, as a daily adjuster, you're going to have f house fires, you know, water damage, theft, vandalism. You're going to be, and it's going to be all different kinds of policies. Yeah. And, a bunch of, and it's not just a bunch of residential. It's going to be like landlord protection policy. It's going to be a bot policy. It's going to be a this policy, a renter's policy, condos. Oh, man. Condo, right? Right. And so it's, it's, it's this is where like your like more ad advanced person is gonna you know if if you if you get if you do some, some cat and then <coughs> go st start doing daily hopefully you can you're not you're not gonna be getting like you know a total burned down house for your first claim I mean it's trial by fire obviously but it's uh, so that's the reason why because yeah. people ask me that well can I go do daily or whatever. The, Probably not. No. Probably not. No, not, not, out, not out of the gate. Not right out of the gate. Maybe if you were a contractor, yeah. if you were a general contractor prior to, you might be able to run some of that kind of stuff, yeah. depending on your experience, but typically no. But, and I've done this before, if you call, your firm, there's nothing going on, it's, it's December, January, and you're like, I want to go work. Um, you can call your firms and say, because most firms will do daily too. Uh -huh not just cat, yep. um, and say, I, I live in Dallas, Texas, right? But call up Alacrity or call up Pilot or call up Eberle or call up whoever and say, hey, I just wanted to see what, if you guys had, or needed adjusters in any particular area around the country for daily. You know, I've got experience doing daily, you know, what, I've done so many X number of storms, what do you got? Uh, well, we're, we're dying for adjusters between Portland and Seattle. Or I'll be there, you know, in three days. I can go up there and take Right, those. and you're only going to give me 10 claims? Fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, th and they will keep feeding claims to you. Yeah. You're not gonna, it's not going to stop until you it's no. cry uncle. But yeah, but if they say, well, we've got a half a or a dozen, you know, and it's going to be a 1,500-mile drive for you, especially as a new adjuster, 100% I'm doing that, even if, I, if it costs me money, because that's, that's, it's helping out the firm, right? so and they remember that. Here's, the, here's another one for that exact same thing you're talking about you've gone out you've run a storm or maybe you've done a couple storms in a season you did okay you stayed to the end yeah yeah that was the main thing you got a little sideways and you freaked out but but you yeah, made it's it it's gonna happen right and now you're talking about november december when you call up that ia firm and say hey how about you just give me one daily claim while i'm sitting here in dallas just give me one. Let me see how I can do with it. Because yeah. I ran those 40 claims for you, you know, this summer, but I really want to keep my, my hands in the game. I want to become better. I want to be better for you. So one, just give me, don't turn me on. Just give me one <laughs> and then perform. It gets back to what we were just saying yeah. and then perform. And then maybe they give you one more. I know coming out of the school, we're less than 20 days to first claim, right? Yeah. But all of our partners will give all of our guys one claim. All right. How long is it going to take you? <laughs> right? And they go and they get it today. They inspect it tomorrow. It takes them three days to close it. But they finally get it closed within the parameters and the timeline. They turn it in and they review that claim and they say, Okay, that's 50 percenter. So here's all of the things you need to do to get up to the 75 percent. Right, right. So then you fix that claim, yeah. And then you say, hey, can I have one more? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Next thing you know. And and that's how you learn how to do day claims. Yeah. It never ceases to amaze me. Our guys will leave here. At least a half a dozen of our adjusters had a major fire loss on their first claim. Now that's total BS, but 
they got it because all of my partners are like, oh, well, guy, I'll take care of it. <laughs> right? We can send it out to the, oh, he came from the school. Oh, yeah, guy, I'll fix it. And we do. But um, that's not a way to start learning day claims. You want to learn day claims slowly, one at a time, and then the next one maybe is a theft. Yeah. Or a bank repo. You yeah, know, yeah. What do you? How do you make that happen? Car hit the corner of the car house. Car hits the corner of the house. I mean, you just, it, it, a car does uh, three donuts in the front yard. What do you do on that claim? You're going to get that fix, claim. Fix the front yard. Exactly. <laughs> the landscaping company. Fix how, the front how, yard. What do you guys, how, can, how much is it going to cost to fix this? Right? Right. It's not, that's not an exact domain. No, so you it's gotta, not an exact So you got to figure out how to, you know, and, and I, I, I was trained very, very early on, like the guys that trained me, uh -huh. um, which I was absolutely blessed and lucky to have those reinspector trainers on that. Because my first storm was a State Farm storm. Nice. And they were like, if you don't, if you can't find the price of something in Xactimate, that was 22 years ago or whatever. Um, if you can't find the price in Xactimate, call somebody or go to the because you're going to have above ground pools with the metal tops on them, you know, or whatever, and they've got things in them. Take a couple pictures of that. I'm going to swing by Pools or Us, show a picture of the, to the guy, and say, "What is that? How much is it? Can you fix it? Do I replace it? What do we do?" Oh yeah, those are 14 bucks a piece. We got you know they're in stock here, you know, and then. Well, how long does it take for a guy to, to tear those old ones off, put the new ones on? Ah, oh, probably for that pool, two hours, or four, whatever it is, right? There's my estimate. Price, you know, labor and materials per pools or us. Kevin, here's his number, and I put that right in the line item. So the yeah. Omar has it. Put it in the activity diary, right? So they taught me. They said, find that price. Get a get sure. a good price, right? And these days you can Google stuff. You know, you can do it both ways, right? You can get a Home Depot, make sure you're in the right zip code for it, right? Because you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. like, you know, Montana to New York, because it's going to be more expensive over here. Yeah. Are you interested in more than just punching a clock and paying the bills? Wouldn't you rather be on the A-team, surrounded by the best of the best in the industry? Then you need to check out Eberl Claim Service. For well over 30 years, Eberl's philosophy of treating adjusters as they wish to be treated has allowed them to establish a vast network of the most professional, educated, and dedicated adjusters in the industry. So at Eberl, you're in good company. If you're a motivated and compassionate adjuster slash claims professional, Eberl wants you to represent their organization. Go to jobs.eberls.com right now and get started with Eberl Claim Service. Yeah, and, and we did one of the things we do in class. We have a um, garage, full height garage cabinets, right? So yeah, that's yeah. one of their claims. So you go to Xactimate and you go, CAB, full height, enter 14 feet at $270 a foot. Right. Right? Yeah. Or you go in and you use something else in Xactimate, the utility grade. But it says it's unfinished. But these were IKEA cabinets right, that I had. Right, right. So can I really use that? But literally, if you go online and say white full height garage cabinets, there's 50 to Wayfair and Home Depot. Right, right. And you can look and go, that looks just like what I'm doing. Yep, yep. Figure out what the shipping is, figure out what the cost is, figure out what the tax is. And then you can put that into your estimate. And this is where I found that like kind of quality. Yeah, yeah. But that's a day claim kind of thing. And again, to what we're talking about, you know, if you're trying to, if you're a new guy and you're breaking into day claims, do it super slow and just ask them for one. Don't say, turn me on. Yeah. Just, can I have one, please? Let me show you what I can do. Yep. Yep. And then talk to your file reviewer and talk to your manager and yeah. ask yeah. them the questions. Don't be afraid to get on the phone, man. No. Here's the bottom line. If we have to split 60-40, we take 60, they take 40. You think they want us to be good? They do, because they're getting 40%. Yeah, yeah. So they're willing to take the time when it's not super busy during a storm. You're never going to get that during a storm. But if it's off storm season and you're trying to break into this business, then you want to stay in contact. You want to talk to the file reviewer. What can I do better? Can you send me something from somebody else that you really liked? Yeah, yeah. Right? Sure. Send me a sample from somebody. Whoa, how do I do that? Right. That's how you're going to make it. Yeah, for sure. And that is education. 
All yeah. of this that we are talking about is education. You don't need to give me a bunch of money. You don't need to go and give city a bunch of money or Vale a bunch of money. You need to study on your own and have the initiative that this is the business you want to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Period. So, yeah. So, all right. So, let's kind of lay out th the last couple of pieces. So, we have to learn how to use a computer. Number one. Learn how to use Xactimate. Number two. Get some policy knowledge, you know, f in whatever way you can with getting your, getting your license and then you can, there's other ways to study for policy, right? Scoping. How do we scope? What's scoping all about? Construction, customer service. Construction, scoping. Construction, <laughs> scoping. <laughs> estimate, like we're actually writing estimate, not just learning where stuff is in exact but right. like writing an estimate based on what we've scoped, based on the construction that we've picked up, and then understanding customer service. And that's, unless you can think of another piece to that, that's basically, the, wrap your arms around that stuff, you know, whether you go to a school or you don't, because you can, you can figure out how to learn each one of those, th those building blocks individually on, on your own. With the internet these days, all of that is there. Yeah. You can go on the internet and type in HO3 policy and there's going to be a PDF of an HO3 policy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Right? Yep. You download that PDF and you start reading it and you're like, well, what the hell does all this mean? Here's one of the, the, the best parts and I see this all the time in class. Is we, it's death by PowerPoint. The day we do policy is just like, ah, right. none of us like it, right? Yeah, yeah. But the big thing with a policy, I'm just gonna put this anywhere you want, but the big thing with a policy is it says what's covered and what's not covered and how the parts and pieces are covered. Yeah, yeah. Right? So on coverage A and B, if water, wind-driven rain comes through the pipe jack into the kitchen, I can fix the drywall, right? Because it's an open peril part of the policy. Yeah, yeah. Dwelling and other structures, open peril. But I can't buy the kitchen table because that's contents. And that's where when you're reading in the policy and you start reading of what's not covered, and it says, we don't cover anything unless it has a storm created opening. Yep. Oh, well, I can't fix the drywall. On oh. a commercial policy, you might not be able to. And, and even nowadays, they're changing policies. So I'm not saying this is a forever. Right, right, of course. But this was certainly one of the biggest problems I had when I was reading policies. What does this mean? Right. Right? So storm created an opening means contents. I can still fix the drywall on the ceiling because the water got into it. But, and again, now, nowadays policies are adapting and changing. Yeah. I get all of that. But um, while you're reading it, that's where the confusion comes in. And when you get confused, you have to stop and see where you are yeah. in the policy. What part of the policy is this saying to me? Yep. And once you kind of figure that out, then you can start navigating policies. So spend three days learning how to read a policy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Spend a week learning how to use Windows 10. Spend a week how to zip file folders. Those are things, if you want to be successful in this business, you have to know. And you yeah. don't learn those on a storm. They do not happen. No, no. If you do not know how to zip a file, and create a PDF and attach it to a, a folder. Yeah, or get, get pictures out of the camera and get, your, compu your computer crash right, and get, burn. So you have to get them out of your camera and get them on your computer before you can put them into Xactimate. Because right. if you take them from your camera and you put them in Xactimate and there's a glitch in that wire, you just lost everything. Now you're going back to the house and retaking all your photos. <laughs> right? Yeah. Been there, yeah. done that more than twice, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's and those are those are adjuster processes that you know you're only going to do that a couple times before you figure that out, but you're going to do it a couple times, right? But the, if you're listening to this, you should have a pencil and piece of paper right now. Don't take my photos from my camera to exactly. 
right? Write that down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that, again. There'll be a transcript of this so you can, like, highlight it. <laughs> right, exactly. And again, Matt, do you know, what you do is all of these parts and pieces. So, yeah, yeah. So between watching Adjuster TV Plus, watching the regular videos that Adjuster TV has, going to <clears throat> Google and downloading a homeowner's policy, going to Google and watching the videos of Xactimate, why would you get a 30-day trial that you only have for 30 days until you have to pay money before you went on YouTube and you watched 15 videos? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, it makes sense. Why, I mean, would, why would you do that? And it, 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 it only it makes sense when you point it out, but when you're first thinking about it, oh, well, I better oh get it. I have to get exactly I, get I, gotta, I have to do this, I have to do that, I gotta do X, Y, mm -hmm. whatever. But you're right, you know, and Adjuster TV's been around now for four, going on four years. Um, I have videos about the basic structure of the policy. Absolutely. I have videos about special limits, that just that one section, because you can find things in there that are covered here and not covered there, depending on the definition of it. At the beginning of the policy, it's covered like a trailer, like 1500 bucks limit for, for a trailer. Unless it's attached to a vehicle, then it's covered under the vehicle's policy, right? Anywhere, it could be in Iowa and you're in wherever, right? Yeah. So there's, you have to, you know, 5% you know, additional allowance for debris removal. Like, how do you handle trees? I've got videos on all this stuff. <laughs> it's all in there. Some of it's in Adjuster TV Plus, but a lot of it's on the YouTube, or AdjusterTV.com, which is YouTube videos in there. Right. Um, so, you know, people can get in there and they can search for that stuff. I try to make content that covers all of those building blocks as much as I can. To, to the, at the minimum, say, Here's where you can go to get more information about that or to teach exactly. yourself how to do this, right? Exactly. You know, and the customer service section is, I did a lot of videos, especially in the beginning on customer service, because that, that that's the, one of the biggest pieces. Everything else serves customer service, right? right? So I've got videos on it. Empathy, why it's important, how to do it, you know, what it looks like to not sound like you're, you know, being a used car salesman, you know, reciprocity, you know, how to negotiate with contractors, all that stuff. Um, so did it's you, there. Do you charge extra for that? No. no for oh. Some of it, you know, Adjuster TV Plus is a... Folks, you better hurry up, because I'm going to suggest he does. <laughs> well, and, and I do. So the, so the stuff that's like in-depth training that's not just like like a surface level stuff is an, an Adjuster TV Plus. Plus, app. yeah. That exactly. is a subscription. It's a paid exactly. service. Exactly. Um, but that's because it takes so much more effort to produce those videos, right? And they're more in-depth and they're more in detail and they're actually yeah. showing them what reality exactly is. Yeah. so for the so the, the rest of the stuff from that goes, that's on youtube i mean that, that's it's i think it's more in depth than anybody else does and it's free uh -huh. over here but this stuff is like you know that's the, the it's, choice it's the and again it's the inside of the, the ding dong what is adjuster <laughs> what's adjust what's adjuster tv plus 29 bucks a month yeah, it's 26 bucks a month 26 yeah i know 26 dollars a month for a year is yeah, gonna, you can buy yearly subscription. Is gonna is it's gonna is gonna make you right so much better if you're doing the things that we're talking about. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not blowing smoke or I'm not trying to sell Adjuster TV yeah. Plus. I'm just saying I already know what you do in your content, and so that's just one little piece. It right? is. It is. I got this computer. Right. I, I want to become an adjuster. When you talk about licensing, I think licensing is a great place to start. Like you're, don't go buy a bunch of new licenses. Just go get your home state license or your designated home state license. And if you think it sucks, don't do this business. Right. Start slow. And if it, you don't like it, don't go any farther. If you can get through the license and you're like, wow, this is an interesting thing, then go study what you need to study online. And then you're like, yeah, I kind of like this even more. Then go buy your computer. Then figure out online how to use your computer. Then and take it in small steps because I think so many people think they want to be in this business. And so they jump in willy-nilly. I can guarantee, right? 
I spent 12 grand before I ran my first claim and had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> right, right. Right, I flew to Texas, took my three day course. I threw to, flew to Colorado, took my four day course. The five day course I flew all the way to Florida, paid 650 bucks for it, and all the guy told me was how much money he made. <laughs> right. and I'm like, what good did that do me? Exactly. So, understanding what you're getting into before you get into it is going to be so much better. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. All right, so at this point in the show, we do, whenever I have guests, I try to do this when I, if I can remember it, which I do remember it for this one. Okay. It's called, I had this one. And it's basically, you know, when you're on storm, when you're with, you know, with your buddies and you manage to, like, everybody can get, go to happy hour, or go to somebody, one of the guys' rooms and, mm -hmm. and crack open a beer and you kind of commiserate about the day. Oh, I had this man, I had this one today. So this is the segment that we do. So okay. I'll start. And so uh, I had this one and I was, I was working in Nebraska and it was probably like 2008, something like that. And if you've been in Nebraska, which I'm sure you have, that that's, it can get a little breezy in the summertime out there on the prairie. So I, <laughs> and if, I'll just say this kind of in advance, I started doing this after this happened. So I'll tell you what the this is in a second. So I climb up, I put my ladder up on the house and insured's not home. And it's like a little, bunch of little tract homes and those little, it's like a little old folks kind of lived in this neighborhood. And put my ladder up, it's bright sunshine in the middle of the day, the wind's blowing and it's a dusty, hot wind. Climb up to the top of the roof and I started just scoping this roof. And I hear a wham! And I was like, oh no. Went back to the front, there's my ladder laying out in the front yard. And I was like, oh, what am I gonna do? What the, I mean, and I'm like looking around, the insurer's not home. Uh, I think my, the last guy that I knew that was working the storm was gone. I was like the only guy left. And so I'm like looking for some, anybody like a jogger, or, you know, I know the insurer's <laughs> not home. And I was like thinking about calling the fire department or somebody, right? And across the street, I see a little screen door open up, right? And this little old lady, little teeny tiny, you know, old woman with white hair and everything, and her little, you know, her slacks and you know, all that. She goes and sits down, and she has, and then she has like a pitcher of iced tea, and she's had it set on her little side table on her front porch, and she sits down and and uh, looks up and sees me, and I'm doing this, and she goes. <laughs> like waved at me, and I was like, and she was like, didn't understand. And finally, she came over, and she got the ladder up <laughs> to where I could just reach down and like grab the end of it and pick it up. And I felt so bad because she was like, you know, just struggling to get trying it. Trying to get it. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so dumb. So from that point on, the thing that I did was tie my ladder off, no bad. matter what, every single time. And even more than that, I would, if, if there was like an offset, little gable, something or sticking out, and there was a corner there, that's where my ladder was. Your ladder goes into the corner. It goes in the corner and it gets strapped down even then. Feet get flipped down and stuck, you know, clawing like down. Yep, exactly. Double check it, right? I've only fallen off a ladder one time, and that was on a deck where the boards were lined up this way and the wall was here. Set the ladder up, and I held it for my buddy, and I looked down, and I was like, oh, that's probably not a good idea. He went up, and then I went up, and I got to the top of the ladder, and it went And I, <laughs> he was at the top, and he like turned around and looked at me, and he said when I fell, because I was like from here up, like the gutter was like right here, I just like disappeared. And then there was like two big handprints right in that gutter helmet, where it went like that. Landed right on my feet and fell back on my rear end. And no injuries, nothing was broken, nothing. It, 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 it was on a deck. I think it was like a, maybe seven foot to the, it wasn't as, as like nine foot or whatever. Right. And just dumb. Just dumb, not even thinking. So, yeah. The moral of the story is always, it's, I mean, it, it's, the, it's the, the weakest point. It's where everybody gets injured, hurt, killed, you know, maimed, whatever. It's, it's, and it's, it's no, ladder safety is no joke. So that's my one story for, I had this one. Okay. It doesn't have to be anything related. That can be something. No, totally no, no, no. But so let's just stay right there. Okay. I had this one, right? Probably Iowa, I'm thinking. 
and Ames, Iowa. So I go out and the lady has a childcare inside her house. And so I go and I set my ladder up because it's like my fourth claim and it's hot today yeah. and I've been scoping and tired. I'm like, yeah. So I grab my ladder and I'll ass up to the top of the roof and I'm on the back slope and I hear this. <laughs> the wind's blowing and there's <laughs> bam. I go, crap. So I go around to the front of the house and my ladder's on the ground. So I'm like, hello, hello, <laughs> hello. And I'm screaming. And then I start jumping on top of the roof, pounding on the roof. And it was 20 minutes before she came out the back door because she had kids to take out. But I was on that roof yelling and screaming at all the neighbors and all the rest of that stuff. And just like you, that was the last time I did not tie my ladder down. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I have never fallen off a roof. And I started climbing roofs when I was 21 years old, and I'm way older than that now. Right. My first business was a chimney sweeping business. So I've been on roofs for 45 years, or over 40 years, right? And I've never fallen off because I am so paranoid oh, man. Yeah. of heights and of ladders. I mean, I'm phobic of it. And so, I have always paid attention when I set my ladder down. I'm making sure that either my feet are turned into the into the grass, which is where I would prefer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Grass. Because at least I get a little cushion when I land. That's what I always right. thought. Concrete, <laughs> there's no cushion. Good. So, Or if I can't get on there and I am on concrete or I am coming from a deck, that I don't ever get above the eave of the house. I get to the eave of the house and I'm tying stuff down. Used to be that we used bungee cords yeah. or rope or whatever. Um, nowadays they have boat straps yeah. that are really cool. They got little uh, clips on them so you just wrap them down. And I would rather cause damage to your gutter and buy you a gutter oh, yeah, than me sure. come off of a roof. And, yeah. oh, man. you know, I could tell you a half a dozen stories of good friends who are no longer adjusters yeah. or were out for a year oh, yeah. because of a broken hip or a broken femur. Broken, or a broken ankle. ankle. That'll, that'll sideline your career for right? the whole rest of the summer, yeah. for sure. And I've exactly. got a couple of buddies that had that happen. So I, I couldn't ribs. agree with you more. Ladder safety. Yeah. I spend a lot of time on that at school, but ladder safety and safety in general. Yeah. Right? My 20 foot aluminum ladder. It's an awesome ladder. When I got it tied down to the gutters and I'm bumping on top of that roof and I'm looking up and I'm like, wow, that's a green sky up there. And it's starting <laughs> to turn a little bit. And gee, there's, it looks like there's, a, my hair starts standing, I got short hair now, but my hair starts standing out. I'm looking at my arms. I'm like, yeah, I, get better, off this roof. I better get off that roof now yeah. before anything happens. And so, yeah. Yeah, see Max drive by. Yeah. <laughs> Chasing yeah. the storm. Chasing the storm. But yeah, that's uh Yeah, big time. And we've yeah. got a uh, in Adjuster TV Plus we you and I actually do a ladder safety whole video. Oh that's right. Safety. Yeah. So it's in there. Yeah, you know, bro, when you get as old as me, year goes by, you just forget everything you did. I know, yeah. No. I forgot. That's why that's why I'm glad I got really good curriculum. Right? I can wake up on Tuesday morning and walk into the classroom and open up the computer and go, oh, well, that's what I'm doing today. And I, <laughs> everything's laid out for me right there. Yeah, I can right. just follow along. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. Well, listen, thank you for coming. And, uh, it's awesome, Matt. I, I appreciate you hosting us down here and letting us shoot and stuff. And it's No good. worries. Come back anytime, and uh, I can't wait to make it up to Montana. And yeah. More towards ski season would be best for me. Sure thing, yeah. yeah. So, Fall I look nice. forward to it. Thank you, brother. All right, boss. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. We'll see you. Okay, man. If you enjoyed this episode of Adjuster TV Radio, leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Find more episodes at adjustertv.com slash podcast. This is Adjuster TV. Where's the dad joke? I don't, I don't know any dad jokes.